Okay. Um, first thing is this is the lamps group. Remind everyone about the note well. If you cannot abide by the note well, please leave the room. This is the agenda. It is as was negotiated on the mail list. Um, there is one slide deck for B and C together, 2B and 2C. Uh, for those of you who are downloading the slides to your laptop. Is there any in the room agenda bash? Okay. Then we will begin. Um, who's, um, is Alexi or Wei giving the presentation? Neither one's in the room. All right, we will start with Jim and come back to them, hoping that they're in one of the long elevator queues. told my last meeting I was presenting first, and I guess I was right. <laughs> um, okay, next slide, please. So, I think we've managed to get through almost everything that needs to be done for these documents. There's just a, a couple of things that I wanted to double check consensus on, as it were. Um, the first is there was a couple people who wanted to list AES 192 in the mandatory, well, in, in, the, in the explicit must, should, may list. Um, I think that I saw enough people who were against that position to say that the consensus of the mailing list was not to do so. Um, if anyone believes that is wrong, they need to let me know. I inserted text on deterministic ECDSA, um, which I think said, use it if you have it, because it's much, much better. Um, if anyone objects to that text, um, please do so. Otherwise, it will stay. So, so Jim, what I think the text says is that signers should use it, but validators uh, can't tell whether the signer used it or not, right? Um, I'm not too sure it says the second. Okay. That is a true statement. Because <laughs> it's really a should use it to signers. Yes. Okay. Right. If you can figure out how to, how to check on the, the rec receiving end, I'll give you a, a math prize. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody asked for... Um, inclusion of P384 as a should in the document on the basis that there's a large amount of government and commercial people who end up needing this because this is a sweet B protocol. Um, I have pushed back on this uh, using much the same logic that I put, that was used to push back on AES-192, which is, yes, it's there, but it's not really something that we're saying is, it, it's, let's see, no, let's, let me rephrase this. Doing so would tend to bless a government position, and that's not an IETF thing, and it's not clear to me that there is a reason to put this in the document as the industries that need it will push on, provi on providers of email clients to provide it anyway. I think that's what I want to say. Um, does, does anyone want to say anything interesting at this point in time? 
So uh, on the well, list, we'll, I've we'll been, start with the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so on the list, I've been the one advocating it. Um, does there, is there anyone else in the room who supports the inclusion of it as a should level requirement? Hi, I'm Debbie Cooley. So as the, yeah. NSA. <laughs> Can so somebody I, so we're calling lower it, the mic? <laughs> I can't. It doesn't move. Um, it's okay. So we're not calling it CNSA, by the way. Not sweepy. Um, True. <laughs> so we would like it. Do, do, can, we, can we now call it the, the, the keep Donald Trump out of my business algorithm? Sweet. The what? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so we would like it, but if you don't see fit to put it in, then uh, you're right. Well, go ahead, Sean. Do it. So um, I guess Sean Turner. I, I guess it just seems odd that we do have this group of people who might be the largest users of this, and you're saying no, like don't put it in there. It just seems weird. I mean, they've got a profile, so technically you could leave it out and say, yeah, no, we don't, you know, it's not part of the base standard, and then, you know, the, the people that need to go buy it can go whack them, but it seems really weird that, like, I mean, really, it's, I mean, it's USG, it's other people in Europe, I mean, there's people in other continents, it's not just USG, so it seems weird that you would not at least mention this somehow. And so we've said not to use the other one, right? The smaller one. No. What, what, what do you mean? Which? How much smaller? So P two fifty six is sort of off the list, right? Uh, no, two fifty two P two fifty six is a must. Okay. Yeah, that's the must. So we would really like it if it was at least a should. This one. Is there anyone else that wants to speak for or against? Tim, I'm shocked you're being silent. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, I will confer with you. We will take that to the list. Um, last one is Shaw 3. Um, at this point in time, I'm seeing zero real support in the IETF for doing Shaw 3 on anything. Um, and I'm perfectly willing to stay with that position um, for this document. Um, is there anyone who thinks that's a bad position? Huh? <laughs> no. Not seeing anyone run to the mic to say otherwise. Okay. So, from, from that list there, that basically says, We've got one thing to, deci to, to, to decide and everything else stays put. Okay, so work left. Um, I need to add a really short paragraph on padding, which says, you know, you may want to think about it, um, but it's not probably a huge issue for SMIME you know, per se. Um, and I need to uh, regenerate examples and try to get some ver verification of them. Um, I'm debating just stealing uh, some Paul Hoffman examples for everything except the authenticated data, so that's the only one I have to generate from scratch. Um, if anyone thinks that's a bad idea, let me know. Um, if anyone is willing to do validation of these things, uh, let me know off list so I can send them to you and say they're right. I think I can probably get Peter Gutman to do validations, but I'm not positive yet. So are these examples that you're putting in this draft or examples you're putting in the 158-page SMIME examples draft? These are examples I'm putting in this draft. Okay, great. Okay, is that it? Okay. I'm done. Okay. Alexa, you're up. No. 
Right, I'm doing a very quick update on the uh, internationalized email addresses in uh, PICX certificates. Um, my co-editor did a very good job. He did uh, two updates. Uh, basically, we received, I think, three reviews, one from Russ, one from Sean, and one from Jim or something like that. Uh, I believe all of the comments were addressed. Um, basically, a clarification on whether um, new um, other name form is allowed in issue alt name. So it is allowed. We thought there was no reason to disallow it. Um, disallow wildcard characters. Uh, some clarification on encoding by total mark character, uh, Unicode characters disallowed. Um, SN1 module, some OIDs were temporarily allocated and then deallocated and the TBD, so this will be uh, resolved by IANA. Um, so I want to say one thing on that point. The other name OID um, way just put it the next available one into the internet draft. So since I happen to be the IANA expert on that registry, I actually made that allocation so that if anyone implements from the internet draft or the RFC, they'll be implementing the same code point. I thought it'd be really bad if that changed. Yes, but that, uh, it yeah. should have been a D TBD, uh, but he didn't do that. And so I, right, I right. saved us from, from potential uh, early implementers doing the wrong thing. Yeah, I, I think, thank you for that. Um, I did explain offline to a way that IAN allocations typically happens later, but you know. Um, yeah, I think you can show the next slide, which basically says, I think we're done. I, I, do, I don't know of any open issues. There is no TBD in the document as far as I remember. Does uh, anyone want to raise any new issues? Does anyone think this document is not ready for working group last call? Okay, then by the end of the week, I will begin uh, a two-week working group last call. Thank you. Sean. So I guess just for um, completeness, I guess PhD in the chat room did say that he thought not including SHA-3 in the SMIME specs was a bad idea. So just want to. He thought we should include. Should include. I think what he's saying was should include SHA-3. So, right. so I just want to point that out. With which signature algorithm? OK. All right. Hi, my name is Sean Turner, and I'm in the pink box. So why am I here? Um, I asked Stephen Farrell to uh, AD sponsor this draft, and he said, that's awesome. Please go get some comments. Go to LAMPS. So here I am. Next. All the links actually go to things. So what's EST, right? So EST is an enrollment over secure transport. Um, it's the last RFC that came out of PKIX. Um, leave the joke up there. Basically, the idea is to allow um, people to do enrollment and get certs and you know, server-generated certificates over an HTTPS connection, and it's get and posts. And it's just a collection of them. So there's one for CA certs. There's one for doing simple enrollment, which is the tens and sevens. Simple re-enroll, it's the same thing. Server key gen allows you to generate, ask the server to generate you um, a public-private key pair. Um, full CMC, which is just another interface to do, you know, the full CMC dance that you could do. And then there's CSR attributes, which was added to allow the, um, the EST server to provide something to the um, client that they can then use to include in one of the enrollment requests. So an example of it essentially is HTTPS, you know, example.com, dot well-known, slash EST, and then like the, the service name. So what do I want to do? Extend all the protocols. You give me a framework, and I need to do some stuff, so I want to extend it. The key point here is it's an extension. It's not an update. I don't think that every EST server that's out on the planet 
there are a few, need to do all of these things. It's just some additional services and some people could adopt them. So I have actually talked with some people. Dan Harkins is not here. He, he uh, thought some of it was a little interesting. Some of it actually implemented in Yokohama, like on the fly, fairly quickly. So that was nice. And Panos at Cisco, I guess I also talked to. Unfortunately, I will butcher his last name, so I won't try it. He said some of it was good, and some of it he went, meh. So I am completely uh, understand that not all the services are universally loved by everybody, but I think that if you put them enough of them together, I got enough use cases that they could be used. So next. So, first thing I want to do is extend the existing server key gen in three ways. The first thing I want to do is that there are some additional CMS content types that allow you to return, um, to, to allow you wrap, uh, wrap key packages in, in additional things. So one of them essentially is, um, right now you could do naked, which is essentially just return a naked key over TLS, which is good for most scenarios, but not for those that are slightly more paranoid. Um, the next thing is you can use encrypted data or envelope data. Well, there's this RFC 6032, which is encrypted key package. So that's useful if you want to do this thing called CMS content constraints, which you can put in a certificate to limit the person that's allowed to authorize or originate these packages, what they can do. So the idea is that you would like essentially link the two. Um, the next thing is that actually, um, because we also have a way to return receipts and errors, we'd like to have the ability to return these back to the server. So the idea is that when you give them a package, you can say, you know, please return this receipt with an attribute. If there's an error, hey, guess what? You, you post back the, the, the receipt or error. And you do that with a post. And I had to figure out a way to, some place to put this. So essentially what I did was I extended the syntax from server key gen to some place called return. So it's generic because it's post receipts and errors. I could have had one for each, but I figured since it's one thing, it's a post, you would just go there. Um, and the one thing that both, I think, Dan and Panos liked was actually returning a PKCS 12. We'd love that everyone would use the standard formats that we came up with, but PKCS 12 is still used, and so we're just going with the flow. Um, it's just add another one that would actually be used. So. You know, we tried our best, and everybody was like, hey, that's really great, but P12 is kind of what gets used, so I'm giving up. So next. And then all of the new services. So the idea essentially is this PAL thing, and this is where I'm going to duck. It's an XML formatted file that essentially is a, a, a flat file with a bunch of entries that are included. There's an IANA registered type. There's a name for the thing. There's a pointer in it and a date and a size. And so basically, you'd have this file, and you can just you would you get pointed at it through some a priori syntax, and you would essentially just walk through this file to know all the things to get. So the first thing you would get is like your CA certs. Then you can maybe get firmware TAMP stuff if that was interested. Um, then you could get some CRLs, and then you get some get, do your enrollment, and you can do all these things. And at the end of the day, after you've walked through this whole file, you're ready to go. You're pretty much ginned up, and you can start communicating. You don't have to like guess what the next step is. So there might be some other way to do this, but this is the part that Dan implemented kind of on the fly fairly quickly. So distribute, and I have some slides later if we have time, which we might, um, or if you're bored, we can just skip them and you can read them later. Um, distribute EE certs. So this, this service would allow you to essentially say, hey, I know that these devices are really only going to talk to a couple of people. So just distribute certs that you know that the device is actually going to talk to. So say you're setting up a thing in a house or something, and it's only going to talk to four other things, you could give it those four certs so it doesn't have to go just go find them later. It's just already got them. So when it goes to communicate, it can use, the, it can use them to just verify or decrypt stuff. Um, CRLs and ARLs. So I know there's a way that you can do, um, that, that you can just straight up pull the CRLs and ARLs from CAs, but you could also just use this mechanism to distribute them. Um, symmetric keys. Again, it's another key format that we defined in the IETF, and the idea is that, hey, it might be good to actually be able to use this EST thing to distribute them. So the idea is that essentially the, the client would connect to the server, and the server would say, hey, look, here are all these symmetric keys that you, you could use, and Whammo would download them. Um, and again, it's CMS wrapped, and you can encrypt sign. There's a whole bunch of you know, various ways that you can wrap these things to provide various levels of security. None if you want, or a whole bunch. And then we get into the more fun ones, like firmware. It is an RFC standard. There are actually people that use it, so the idea is that we'd like to be able to support those people that could use it. TAMP's another one. And then, of course, all of these things that we you know, require that um, IETF protocols do, like return receipts and errors, we included those. And for completeness, we're like, all right, so we need to be able to support returning those. So that's where this you know, um, service name slash return. 
um, with posts. So the difference is all the ones on the left are gets, and the ones on the right are posts. Sean, uh, yes. yesterday we had an interesting discussion in TLS about uh, some groups in data centers that might use pre-shared keys. So is this uh, symmetric keys thing appropriate to solve that problem, or is it orthogonal? I mean, it, it could be used. So the idea is if they were to set up their servers to be able to go pull this thing, you, you, could, you could see that that could be a solution. Interesting. And backup, and this is just kind of more, if you want to go to the next slide, it just shows you the format of the PAL. And again, I duck because it's XML. But it's basically, you know, it's, it's a PAL with a bunch of messages. It's got a type, and it's from an IANA registered thing, which is we have on the right, and there's a whole bunch of them. So we kind of broke it down, the ones that I've been using. Um, you know, because you, the PAL could be like a million long. Maybe you don't want it a million long. You can clip it and make it short. So you can have one PAL point to another PAL. Um, and then all of the things that it might do. You have a date format, the size of the thing, and then some info about the actual thing that you're pulling down. It's just a, a format for a manifest. Basically, it's right? like a manifest, basically. Yeah, that's probably a better name for it. Is it commonly used somewhere? Or? Is it commonly used? Uh, there are people that are using it, yes. And okay. <laughs> As in, you didn't invent it? I mean, I mean no. Okay. Well, I mean, yes, I invented it, but no, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a manifest, basically. It's not a, there's not a standardized manifest format, but it is a... What, you don't want to use JSON? Yeah, so I knew you were going to say So I knew somebody was going to ask me that, and yeah, and that's where all the cool kids are doing now. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not, apparently I'm not cool. Seabor. And I'm getting older. <laughs> I'm not cool, and I'm getting older. Um, did it in XML, this is obviously not the newest thing on the planet, and my kind of theory is that I need to do XML, and so if other people want to do JSON, that's great. If somebody can tell me how to allow both but not require one, and allow the client to request what they get returned would be great, but if we get into this MTI thing, I'm going to lose my mind because <laughs> I just need to return this format, and if it's JSON or XML, I really just don't care, or the next thing. I just need, I need XML, there are other people might like JSON. Is there, if, you know, if you know, as an art guy, you can tell me what the right way to do this thing is. I, I was just sort of... You're poking fun. Uh, yeah, I, just, <laughs> I, took I thought I asked just I, because I can. I, you know, I, I took I because, because okay. I can. <laughs> um, as I haven't read your draft, can I ask some ignorant sure. questions? So, um, is there a way to discover which one of the new ones you support or not? Or, uh, like, do you have to support all of them? Or? No, so the way I wrote it, in a sense, there's none of them are required. So they're all optional. So the idea is that if you, if you didn't want to do the PAL, you could just skip the PAL. If you just want to do the e-search, you just add it. So you as a client will just know if you were to go, um, go connect to it, and if you, didn't get, if, it, if you didn't get to that thing, you get an error, basically. So there's no Okay, so the client will use one of these and get an error. Yeah, okay, yeah, fine. They get an error if they don't, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not awesome. I mean, so there, there is some grander schemes where we could do some like service discovery kind of thing and all that stuff. That's just a bridge too far, I think, for basically what I need to do, which is like, Here's some more stuff you could get. Here's a list of things. Point to it. Go get it. Um, can you go back to slides? <laughs> Sean gets skewered by the CMC <laughs> author. <laughs> Two slides? <laughs> I was waiting for him to... <laughs> start, at, start at zero, not one. <laughs> um, so distribute EE certs is basically this is get all EE certs? Or get whatever or is this pu or, or it's get whatever. Doing pu so it's not, a new, it's not a new directory query mechanism. It's a mechanism which the CA, who knows, a priori, you're going to talk to these people, here are some certs that you might like, there they go. So it's not a query mechanism to be like, hey, I need certs for so-and-so. It's the, it's the EST server giving it's, it's, it's you. It's the give me a set of certs that yeah, I think so I might think like. It, think there's, of no, there's no publishing there. It's just yes. give me some bag of it, certs. It's a get. It's basically exactly yeah. that. It's a cert bag message. Because it's okay. CMS, right? So all of these are basically, except for the XML stuff, are all essentially CMS wrap stuff. Right. Um, after this meeting, I'm going to go to a core meeting. Core meeting. And EST is showing up in core. Interesting. Really? So, yes. <laughs> well, it's not a crazy idea. I mean, when they first came, I was like, ooh, whoopie doo. It's just like CMC. But, you know, it's, it, it, there's, there are some other things that it does that seem to work. And it fits some other people's deployment models for cert. So, so, so obviously, they're, they're going to want to, you know, change things at some point to 
return some other things, but obviously they're going to like you know roll over and die if you feed them XML. Well, that's fine. So my theory is that I don't. So the PAL is the only one that's XML, right? The rest of it's right. all CMS blobs. And if again, you can tell me how I can query and get XML, and they can query and get JSON, that'd be great. And I don't know if the, if you do that based on some. Oh, you can ask for you. you, can, you Can't you, one do pal, one do pal JSON, do one do pal. Sure, you could do question a, format uh, equals. I, I, yeah, so I guess you do that with <laughs> something like that. Yeah, so if we could do that, that'd be great. And then just not like you could actually agree on the quote unquote schema, but it can't be a schema because it's JSON because JSON doesn't have a schema. But right, but you they'd basically actually, agree. They, they, to they'd the actually want it to return to Seaboard probably. Uh, they could yeah. do Seaboard JSON whatever. Yeah. We'll make up a new format. Call it Sean. Hi, Sean. Hey. <laughs> Is that a new one? <laughs> Hi, Sean. Sean Leonard. Um, so yeah, just to, although it sounds like some of this XML versus JSON versus CBOR or whatever was a little facetious, okay. this exact same issue of um, uh, type negotiation has come up in uh, NetConf and Yang, and they have a, an approach of negotiating uh, internet media types. So I would say that, so, you, you know, we should just use a very similar approach. Over HTTP? Over HTTP. Over HTTP. RESTConf just use HTTP content negotiation. I think it's accept header. Oh, okay. So you just say accept and I, the format or oh, list so of formats. Oh, you say, because that'll work. Because, I mean, that's basically what I want. Like, I wrote this and was like, how the hell? I knew I was going to get zinged with this. So it's like, how do I get out of this box? The, so if you guys have a solution, I can go look it up and run it. Yeah, the only uh, annoying thing from RESTConf is they sort of said, Clients needs to support both JSON and XML, and so it supports just one. So I, I would rather, if you want to recommend one, you know, recommend one. Don't recommend two. Right, well, or, you know, we make should. one, one I mean, mandatory to implement and everything. As long as it's not a must, if it's a should, I'm okay. Because yeah. there are times where you can just be like, can't do that. The, the, the box doesn't do that. So that's life. All right, cool. That is actually really valuable input because I didn't know how to do that at all. So, um, this is not in the charter of, of LAMPs, um, but Stephen kind of said go here, so Sean came here. So what I'm going to do is if you think this work should go forward, please send an email to Stephen. <laughs> Next, the next slide is kind of more of a, this is all in the draft, right? So it's an eye chart. So basically this is, you know, what you could do if you had the PAL. So essentially you do a get to get the PAL, and then you would just, like I said, walk through the whole thing. So it just provides you more information about, you know, what's in the get and all the, the fields. And it's, it's basically like an eye chart, and it's in the draft. So all of this stuff is already registered. There's no new IANA registries at all in this stuff. It's, it's using... Uh, no, no. So, so the only thing you're doing then is extending the dot well known slash ext. To, to it, it wasn't clear to me whether I had to do that via standard track or informational, so I just kind of did it and put it in a standard track and said, meh, because I'm not updating the draft. I mean, obviously, I would prefer to go standard track. Everyone loves to go standard track. If you tell me I don't actually have to and I can go informational, then that's probably okay too. I suggest you, you talk to Mark Nottingham because he's expert, right, for the registry. For the dot well-known stuff? Yeah. I mean, yeah. We kind of got shanghaied into that, unfortunately, when we didn't. I, mm. people were I don't think he, he will have a problem. He'll just tell you, you know. What the answer is. If you are extending, you're extending existing registration, right? Yes. Well, so it's, existing it's registration ES, ES, probably need to point to your document yeah, so as e, well. But so it's EST and then the next level down is what we're doing. Exactly. So yeah. it's, already, it's already allocated. So right. So I, th I don't I, know that we need to do that. But again, as usual, standards tracker, everybody loves that. And that's what I want to do. You probably too. want on, in the AI on the registry for dot well known for this to be discoverable. Yeah. So you, yeah. I get them to update. I'll, I'll check with Mark. I got I to, I'm not, I got to do other things with him too, so. And that's pretty much it for my presentation. So again, send, uh, re read it, send comments to Stephen, that'd be great, or to me and Stephen, and I'll resolve them and get them out the door. So all of you are sending email to Stephen right now, right? Telling him either go forward or don't go forward? Yeah, I mean, so, one, so one of the points, I guess, is that like, if you think that I'm like, the, the biggest idiot on the planet, like now would be a good time to hear that. Because I think the problem with a lot of times with 80 sponsored drafts is, right, is that Stephen goes, great, I'm gonna sponsor this, 
is there any discussion, right? And, and like, do you want to know, like, is it like this the stupidest thing on the planet? I know it's not the smartest thing on the planet, but it's also probably not the stupidest thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm personally interested in like, no, don't do this. You're wasting my time. Uh, it's Stephen dot Farrell oh, draft, draft, draft <laughs> Turner dash EST extensions. So, all right, cool. That's it. Thank you very much. It's right there on the screen. Click on the link. Click on the link. Okay, we went through that very quickly. Again, working group last call on the EAI document. We'll start this week. Uh, I was planning to do a two-week working group last call. Anyone have objections to a two-week working group last call? Okay, Jim, when you said you have one thing to discuss on the list and then update your document. Um, is it going to happen this month ne or next? Next. Next. Okay, yeah. so we'll do working group last call on that afterwards. So yeah. I was just going to suggest that I know that we probably shouldn't do this, but there is a Thanksgiving holiday in the US and the vast majority of people won't be working that week. So can you just, if you're gonna start one this week, can you just make it three weeks? I can do that. Okay. Anyone, uh, anyone think longer is necessary? It is a pretty short document. Okay, then we're done, thank you. <laughs>